Welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. Today, we're going to look at modeling an insurance portfolio using Aggregate. Um, I'm going to continue to work in Colab just this uh, time. And so we need to reinstall um, uh, Aggregate. Obviously, if you were working in your own environment, uh, you would not need to do this each time. Just a single installation would work. Uh, we're going to cover a little more of the DECL, the DEC language that makes it easy to go from a DEC page definition of or description of a distribution to an actual probability distribution. And we're going to look at modeling a small portfolio of kind of commercial auto kind of business, uh, 10 expected claims with a severity, uh, $10 million policy limit, no deductible, uh, log normal severity with a mean of 50 and a CV of 4. Okay, so just check here. This all seems to have worked. So we do need to restart our runtime. Again, you don't need to do this if you've installed on your own machine. It would be a one-time uh, installation process. Now I do want, um, we're going to, uh, so we're going to begin by from aggregate import build. The build object is your gateway to all the functionality. And there's another function in there called QD, QD which stands for quick display I like to use. Uh, allows me to control how things uh, look on a consistent basis. And then possibly not best practice, but I want to turn off all the warnings uh, that we get so we don't get uh, distracted by them. All right, so we're going to build our first uh, insurance realistic model. Uh, in the introductory session, I used a, a dfreak, dsev uh, syntax that was designed to build very simple distributions with a discrete number of outcomes. Here, we want to use more realistic uh, insurance um, uh, distributions. So the basic uh, syntax is going to be, we start off with the ag keyword to say we're going to build an aggregate distribution. Uh, and then we give it uh, some sort of name, I'm going to call it commercial auto. Now the program is actually going to be just one line long. Um, but for readability, it's quite helpful to uh, split it out over multiple lines, Python will automatically concatenate these bits for you uh, put between parentheses. So uh, first of all, we're telling uh, aggregate, dis aggregate distribution called commercial auto. Next, we need to tell it what the exposure is. And I'm going to do that by telling it that I want 10 claims. Um, there are other ways of doing that that we'll discuss later on. Then uh, also part of the exposure, I want to give it the policy limit. So it's going to be a $10 million limit, excess of zero. I'm going to work in thousands here. Um, then we need to tell it the severity distribution. So I said we want a log normal. Uh, severity with a mean of 50 and a CV of 4. And uh, then finally, we need to tell it what frequency distribution is going to be. And let's just start off with a uh, Poisson uh, distribution. And then once we've made that, let's uh, just execute uh, QD on it to, to take a look. All right, so this output should be familiar from the first video. Uh, this is our diagnostic information around this distribution. So we're going to show we've got three rows in here for the frequency, the severity, and then in aggregate. The first column is showing us the theoretically expected values. The second column is showing us what aggregate has computed using its fast Fourier transform uh, algorithm. So we ask for 10 claims. We get 10 claims that the frequency is always exact. There's no uh, estimation on the frequency, um, the severity. So we ask for a mean of 50 here. Um, and we're getting 49,804 theoretically because we also asked for the $10 million uh, policy limit on this. Okay, so that's why that severity is, is a little lower on the theoretical side. And then the aggregate is obviously just going to be 10 times that, so 49,804. Uh, the discretized version, and we're discretizing here with 2 to the 16, which is 64,000 buckets are going to be used. So we're, and each bucket is going to have a width of a, a quarter. So again, we're working in thousands. So that's a $250 uh, bucket size. And you can see the estimated uh, uh, severity, average severity, 40, 49 out of 4, accurate to sort of six uh, decimal places there on the, the relative error. And then aggregate, again, uh, spot on uh, five uh, decimal places of accuracy. And you can see uh, all of the statistics here were, were spot on um, on the aggregate uh, CV. We're missing slightly on the, the last digit on the um, severity CV. 
and um, on, on the aggregate skewness, but a very, very close uh, approximation. So again, this is going to pass all of our uh, validation um, that we've asked for, and we get kind of the highest blessing here that this model is not unreasonable and is, is fit to use. Now, the objective of aggregate is to make it as easy to work with um, aggregate distributions as it is to work with built-in distributions like the log normal and so forth. So all of those functions that you're used to having uh, should be available to us. So I'm just going to run through some of the uh, built-in functionality that we have. So there's a series of functions that are just sort of conveniences for um, accessing some of these uh, expected values here. So if you want to know what the uh, theoretical uh, mean or standard deviation or uh, CV is, uh, those are all available in this AG series of numbers here. So 49804, um, the uh, standard deviation is not actually shown here as a computation, but often you want to know standard deviations to do approximations and things, and the CV uh, 1.179 as shown there. If you wanted to know the um, uh, actual values that uh, aggregate was coming up with, um, you can use another series of functions called the EST. So they, that pulls out the uh, estimated numbers that aggregates computed. So you can actually see you know, exactly where the differences lie here in the sixth significant digit and so forth uh, between those two outcomes. Then we have uh, probability functions. So we have the, the probability mass function. Um, uh, we have a proxy of the PDF. So aggregate's not too fussy about whether the distribution is continuous or discrete. It actually assumes it is a discrete distribution supported on multiples of the bucket size. So the bucket size here, remember, is a quarter. So it's thinking the distribution only takes values zero, a quarter, a half, three quarters, and so forth. Um, but it will proxy out a, a PMF and a PDF. The PDF is going to be the mass function divided by the bucket size. So it's going to be four times uh, bigger there. And then we've got our uh, cumulative distribution function. So the probability losses are less than or equal to 1,000, uh, 90%. We've got a survival function. Probability losses are greater than 1,000, which should then be uh, just uh, 10%. Um, and uh, we've got the quantile function built in or the value at risk function. Um, so that's the inverse of your CDF. So the probability uh, that losses are less than or equal to 2745 is 99%. And that function is, uh, the by definition, it's the inverse of um, the CDF function. Um, so if we uh, do something, um, sorry, that was the wrong way around. If we do the, the CDF of the 98th quantile, we should get 98 uh, come back there. So within rounding, we're, we're doing that. Um, we also have the um, tail var uh, function is available to us. So if we want to see what the 99th uh, t var is, uh, we can ask for that. And this is a fairly thick tail distribution with a log normal. So the t var in this case is actually quite substantially bigger uh, than the value at risk. Always good to then look at some pictures. So there's some built in uh, plotting capability. Um, we can see here on the left. Um, the probability density function, uh, we've got the green is the severity and the blue is the aggregate distribution. Uh, we've got the log density in the middle. You see here for the orange, the spike at 10 million because you've got the policy limit and that leads to a sort of bulge here in the um, aggregate probability uh, density function. And then we've got our uh, quantile function here as well. Now, you may be wondering, I've mentioned a few times that um, there's an underlying discretized distribution with 64,000 uh, buckets. So where does that live? It lives in a pandas data frame called a.density here. And I'll just run through the columns quickly. We've got the, the loss amount. So this is our multiples of our bucket size. Remember, that was a quarter. Um, P total and P, that's our probability mass function. P sev is the probability mass function of the discretized severity distribution. Sometimes it's convenient to have the logs computed. Uh, we've got F is the uh, CDF of the aggregate, the CDF uh, F sev of the severity, survival function of the aggregate, survival function of the severity. Uh, we've got limited expected values, and we've got some expected uh, 
policyholder deficit amounts, uh, they're, they're keying off the uh, loss that's in the index and a number of other columns here that uh, I won't go through this time. So that's the introduction to creating a realistic uh, aggregate distribution uh, that you might see from modeling a, you know, a small or mid-sized account. You wanted to know what the distribution was. Uh, 10 claims of commercial auto, $10 million policy limit, log normal severity, plus some frequency, and created from that a distribution uh, object, which is as easy to work in with as a built-in uh, log normal. Thank you.